Welcome to another episode of Music Basics with Ballard. This is episode five, what is Chrome Music Labs? Today is going to be a little bit different from our previous videos. On Fridays, I'm going to be doing what's called Make Music Friday, and I'm going to find different software and digital platforms where you can make music easily and hopefully at your own home. So today, we're gonna to start with Chrome Music Labs. Let's get going, shall we? The website we are using today is musiclab.chromeexperiments.com. You'll see that across the bottom here, but I will show you how to do it just by going through Google. So you do a quick Google search for Chrome Music Lab, and when the results come up, you just click on the top one that comes up. It's that simple. Before we really get into it, I want to remind you that this is intended to be distance learning for my students, and I will be hiding a three code word passphrase inside the video as we go along. That is for my students to find those three words and then put them into a, an attendance form that I have posted for them. So thanks for understanding while I do that during this difficult time. All right, with the business out of the way, I'd like to move on to showing you Chrome Music Labs. Let's take a look. Let's quickly go through all the tools. We have Song Maker. Rhythm, Spectrogram, Chords, Sound Waves, Arpeggios, Kandinsky, and Melody Maker, Voice Spinner, Harmonics, Piano Roll, Oscillators, and our final tool is Strings. My plan today is to go through all the tools from what I feel to be the most basic of tools to the most advanced of tools. And by that I mean that the most basic means that they have the least amount of functions, not that they are actually basic as in they're very easy. It's more of the fact that they have less functions than the other tools. So let's get started. The first tool we're going to look at is the harmonics tool. When you click on the harmonics tool, you see these series of lines that become more and more intertwined as they go through. What they're trying to actually show you is what happens when you double frequency. Now, what's frequency? Well, frequency is the amount of times something oscillates. Ooh, we're getting into harder words. Now, what that means is when it goes from low to high and moves back and forth. And as it moves back and forth, the faster and faster it goes, it creates pitch or sound. So our lowest sound sounds like this. If you were to take that pitch and double the frequency of its oscillations, you'll get this sound. You double it again, you would expect it to jump an octave again, just like it did. If you don't know what I'm talking about with octaves, check out my lesson on intervals. It doesn't though. It goes up by a fifth. You double it again, and it goes up by a fourth. You double it again, and it goes up by a major third. You double it one more time, and it goes up by a minor third. And the nice thing about this is it really shows how harmonics work. And that is all from doubling the frequency starting from our root. Pretty cool, right? All of that discussion on harmonics is comes from a study of music called acoustics. Acoustics is the physics or the math behind how sound travels and sound is created. It's a pretty fascinating science. You should check it out if you ever have time. The next Chrome Labs app we are going to check out is the strings. So let's navigate to the strings app. You'll notice in this image that there is a series of strings each with a dot somewhere along the string line. What strings is showing you is that the length of the string is equal to a pitch. So when you click the one that has no dot, that is our root or our fundamental pitch. And when we take that and we cut it in half, we get the following sound. Now the rest of the strings start doing different types of math. If you do that string and have two thirds of the bottom string, you will have this sound. You have three-fourths of the lowest string, and you'll have this sound. If you have four-fifths of the lowest string, you'll have this sound. You have five-sixths of the lowest string, and you'll have this sound. Notice I'm talking in fractions, but all of these strings 
all have different sounds based on how long the string is. You'll also notice that underneath the dots that you get a different sound altogether. Much like our harmonics app, remember that I told you, the farther we go along in this episode, the more complicated but more combined all of the apps become. I would also like to point out that this is a significant source of math. If you're taking a look at this, you'll see, again, five-sixths, four-fifths, three-quarters, two-thirds, one-half, and one-whole. And you add that math into the frequency and you'll be actually be able to put them together. An old Greek mathematician by the name of Pythagoras is the one who originally figured this out and the math behind it. You might have heard of him before. He's the one who came up with the Pythagorean theorem. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. This brings us to our first passphrase word of the three, and that is Woody's. That's the possessive of Woody. So Woody's, as in Woody's hat or Woody's horse. Woody's is our first passphrase word. The next app we're going to look at is the Soundwaves app. Let's check it out. Soundwaves, as you can see here, has a keyboard and it also has a series of dots. What the dots are representing is air molecules. When sound travels through air molecules, it bumps one air molecule into another and it moves along the line. When you push a key down here, it simulates what that might look like you can see the waves kind of traveling through the keyboard. But what's going on is that it's actually significantly slower than what actually happens. Remember when I told you about frequency before, is that frequency is the amount of times that a something oscillates. Well, when you push down an A, for example, that pitch actually oscillates 440 times in one second. They can't exactly show you that on here and actually have you be able to see it, so they slowed it down significantly. One of the things they do show you, though, is what that oscillation would look like if you were look able to stare at it. Watch the red dot as I play. Travels up and down. That is an oscillation. As you start playing different notes, it starts moving differently. Notice it moves, oscillates faster the higher up the keyboard we go and slower when we're at the bottom. So sound waves is a pretty cool way to see how sound travels. The next app we're going to use is actually called oscillators. Oscillators are ways to make sounds based off a specific type of wave you would see on what's called an oscilloscope. Oscilloscopes are ways to see sound. Basically, it shows you how the frequency moves about the air. Back in the 70s and 80s, it became very popular to create an instrument called a synthesizer. This is a Moog modular synthesizer. It's a pretty cool piece of equipment, and what they would do is, is they would connect different oscillators together to create artificial sounds that sounds like things you would hear in real life. Some people got really good at it. So let's navigate to oscillators. You notice here it's got this funny looking guy on it. And that'll be explained shortly. So what oscillators are is they make specific types of waveforms on an oscilloscope. A square oscillator makes a sound like this. Now this oscillator is kind of fun because when you click, he changes frequency based on where your mouse is on the screen. So if you start low, and move your way high, it goes from low to high. And he does a funny little dance. So that's the square oscillator. You can hit the arrow button and it'll move to a sawtooth oscillator. You'll notice that this sound is a little different from the square oscillator. I often describe a sawtooth sound as very nasally, as if you're talking out of your nose. So listen to it one more time. You also notice down at the bottom that there is a number next to oscillator frequency value. That number is the frequency. If you want to find an A, 440, you can kind of move your way down to it. It's a little hard to get it exactly, but that would be an A in sawtooth form. Our next oscillator is called a triangle, a triangle wave. 
not quite as harsh as the sawtooth, is it? I like making them dance. And our final oscillator is the sine oscillator. A sine oscillator looks more like what you saw in the air molecules movement of the previous app. And you notice the sound is a lot less harsh. It doesn't have crisp and sharp jarring edges to give it that nasal quality. There, I got the A that time. So that is our oscillators app. The next app we're gonna look at is called Spectrogram. And Spectrogram is actually showing you two things. It's showing you the sound wave's frequency and its volume and it does it through a pretty cool color spectrum. Let's see it. So let's navigate to our spectrogram. Now you notice right now, there's nothing really up on the screen. You have to pick one of the buttons at the bottom. Let's start with my voice. So when you push the microphone, you'll notice that it will slowly start picking you up and show you what your voice looks like while you speak. My country tis of the sweet land of liberty. You can also see the vibrato in my voice. That is that shimmy or shake that singers often do when I speak. But you notice it's showing you exactly what I sound like. You can also make it make its own sounds by pushing the button with the hand on it. I'll try not to go too high again. This is kind of like the oscillator where it's playing frequency based on where your mouse is. When you push the flute button next to it, it'll show you what the spectrogram would look like for a flute playing. Harp. the sounds are very much different from each other. That's because the flute is a piped instrument and has one type of sound frequency and the harp has multiple frequencies hidden inside those strings that you're plucking. Again, that's a really complicated thing that comes from acoustic. You notice that the whistle sounds a lot, looks a lot like the flute. Just without the extra harmonics built on top of it. We'll talk, again, that's one of the reasons why that harmonics app was the first one we looked at. Take a look at the trombone. Notice the trombone and the flute have a very similar looking sound. Lots of levels. Those harmonics really show up in instruments like that. Here is an oscillator creating sound like a synthesizer. See a lot less separation of the sound in there. And here's a bird song. Notice the bird song looks a lot like our instruments, has a lot more frequencies above the fundamental tone. Now, I recognize this because, well, I'm old, but this is what we used to do to have to get on the internet. We would have to call using a modem. All right, that's enough of that. The last sound we're gonna do is the wine glass. And that comes from rubbing your finger around the edge of a crystal wine glass. And if your finger is a little wet, it will create a pitch like this. You notice that there's not as many overtones or harmonics on top like there were in the flute and in the trombone. So there you have it. That's the spectrogram pretty cool way to see what sounds look like to the brain as it comes in. The next app we're going to take a look at is the voice spinner. Now the voice spinner isn't so much of a musical tool as some of the others are, but it's a lot of fun to play with. So let's check it out. Let's navigate to the voice spinner. 
When it comes up, you notice this circle with the sound wave on it, and then the slider at the bottom and a microphone button in the center. We'll worry about the slider at the bottom. What that controls is the speed and the direction the sound travels. So you want to hear the sound going forward, you move it to the right. You notice the speed changes as you move from left to right. Well, you can also now play that same sound backwards by moving the slider to the left. You notice that that sounds like something out of some kind of weird horror movie. Now, the other cool thing you can do is you push down the microphone button and record yourself. So let's test it out. Welcome to Music Basics with Ballard. 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 So the voice spinner is a lot of fun. Simba agrees. Now I'd like to give the second word of my passphrase, and that is lunch. As in, I need to eat some lunch. So go get some lunch, okay? The next app we're going to look at in our progression of apps is the piano roll. So let's go on and take a look at it. So let's navigate over to the piano roll. You'll notice when it comes in that it has a series of colored lines across the top and a play button and three buttons across the bottom, a piano, a waveform, and a microphone. Now, what it's trying to simulate here are old, upright player pianos that used to have these rolls in them that would be picked up by mechanical devices and then play notes inside the piano. And it does it like this. As the colored spaces pass over the line in the center, you hear the pitches. It has a series of different songs. Check them out. Now one of the things you can do is change it to the piano line. Here's our next song. Oh, you probably recognize that one, don't you? And our next song. And our final song. You notice it sounds significantly different when I push the waveform button. But I want to show you something even better. This microphone button does this. Ba Try it again. La 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 la. Sounds pretty ridiculous, doesn't it? Let's try another song. Hi. So you can have a lot of fun with piano roll by doing that, making the sounds do all kinds of different things based on the sound that you make before it plays the song. That's piano roll, a lot of fun. Now we're gonna start getting into the apps that you can actually start making some pretty cool music with if you're looking to perform something using Chrome Music Lab. So let's get into them. The next two apps kind of go hand in hand. We have chords and arpeggios. Arpeggios are broken apart chords. So we're gonna start with chords because arpeggio is a little bit more complicated. So here we go, heading over to chords. Now, chords, as you can see, simply has a little piano on the screen. And all you do is you pick one note and it'll play a, a chord above it. In this case, it's going to play a major chord because that's what is selected down on the bottom. Now, if you push it over to minor, it'll switch it to the sadder sounding minor chords. Now, when I was telling you before that you could 
make a little bit of music with it, you could make it play chords in what are called progressions, and more on that later. I'm sure you get the point. So that's chords. Now let's navigate to the Arpeggios app. You'll notice this colorful little wheel. And that wheel is covered with pitch names. And when you click on a pitch name, it'll play you a nice little chord. You have options. You can either play it as a harp or you can play it as a piano. I actually prefer the harp in this app, so I'm going to go back to the harp. Now, one of the things you can all, one of the things you can do is you can pick different chords. So you pick C and it plays like this. You pick A, it plays like this. You pick D sharp, it plays like this. Now you can also go into the inner wheel and play minor chords. Those are those sad sounding chords. So here's C major, here's A minor. Yeah, they have different sounds. Then what you do is you hit the play button once you have picked the chord you want and it'll arpeggiate or play the chord with the notes separated. And you have selections of different arpeggios you can use. I was able to make a pretty significant song by playing around with the pitches that I selected on the arpeggio board. The other thing you can do is you can change the tempo. You can make it go faster or slower depending on which side you go and it slowly clicks to show you how fast it's going to go. Let's say I wanted to really kind of bring it down. I slow it down to here and it's now beating 84 times per minute. If I go to the other side, I can bring it up pretty high. I can get up to 200. Once you've selected your tempo, you tell it to play, it'll go. That's probably a little bit too fast, but you get the idea. But the cool thing is you can play with the arpeggios and come up with some pretty cool songs that work for you, and maybe you can use it to accompany yourself. It's just kind of a cool way to do it, so check it out. The next music making app we're going to use is Rhythm. It's a lot of fun to do, so let's go right at it. I know you've been dying to click on our little monkey friend. Here we go. Once you're in rhythm, you notice you have our little friends up here on the screen, and when you hit the play button, they play things. Now, you can play with each one, and they do different types of sounds. Check it out. You take away these dots, and you just play something in this line. You notice it plays on the other timpani head. And if you play the top line, our little friend over here plays the triangle. So, let's see what I can come up with. What do you think? One of the cool parts of this app is there are four sets of different instruments you can play around with to create some really cool looping rhythms. Like, check it out. Here is the drum set, guys. Or the Latin rhythm, guys. or the African Rhythm Guys. So that's a pretty fun app for us to be able to use. Hopefully you enjoyed making rhythms on it with me. The next three apps are where we really get into our creative meat and potatoes. They're pretty impressive. You have uh, Melody Maker, you have Kandinsky, and then you have Song Maker. Song Maker is actually a pretty new introduction to the Chrome Music Labs. It wasn't there when it originally came out, but I'm really glad it is. So let's start with Melody Maker. When Chrome Labs first came out, the first real Melody Maker we had was the one that's called Melody Maker. So let's check that one out. 
Now Melody Maker comes up with a relatively blank canvas and what you do is you click on these little boxes You might notice that melody showed up in our interval training, but check this out. And it'll just loop what you put on the screen. Now you can add other pitches in there and make different songs, but you can't combine them together. But this is the original sound that you can make some different music. that loops or reminds me of the old Legend of Zelda games. You might want to check those out if you have no idea what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the ones from the 1980s. One of the cool things you can do with this is you can add speed to it. You can speed it up and make it go really, really fast. Or you can make it go significantly slower. So Melody Maker is a relatively simple way to make sounds. You can also have it add harmonies based on what it thinks you want when you click the when you click the button next to the play button. So it'll add harmonies to your melodies. So let's try moving it around a little bit. It tries to guess what you might find pleasing. So it kind of does a pretty good job, but it's not amazing. So that's Melody Maker, the, one of the original song makers that was on Chrome Labs Experiments. The next app we're going to look at is the Kandinsky app. It's actually named after Wassily Kandinsky, an artist who equated painting to making music. So they made a pretty cool app that goes along with his name. Here we are, Kandinsky. So what you do is you draw on the screen and it'll play it for you. That's a basic drawing. Let's hear what it sounds like. Pretty cool, right? But one of the things you can do is you can add a little bit of extras. If you paint a triangle, it'll create a different sound. If you create a circle, it'll add a face to it and it'll sing. So let's listen to it now. You can also change the sounds by clicking on the color wheel and selecting a different set of colors. So Kandinsky is a lot of fun. What you paint comes out pretty awesome. So if you like to draw, maybe Kandinsky is the app for making the best music for you. The final app we're going to look at today is the Song Maker. And Song Maker is kind of a culmination of everything we have done today. It's pretty awesome. They only added it in relatively recently, within like the past few months. So check out Song Maker. All right, let's navigate to our Song Maker. There are a lot of features to Song Maker, and one of the first things I want to point out is the Settings button. So you click on Settings down here. And you'll notice that you can change things from the length of the piece of music. That is very important. Not many people notice that they can do that. You can change how many beats per bar. That's our meter and time signature. You don't know what I'm talking about. Check out that video. It was the one right before this one. You can subdivide the beats. That's also on our meter into higher numbers and lower numbers. You can pick whether the song is major or if it's minor or if it's pentatonic, or if it's chromatic. You can make it even more difficult or as awesome as you want. We're gonna stick with major. You can also make sure it starts on a specific pitch. If you don't wanna keep starting on C, let's say you wanna start on G, you can pick G as your starting pitch. Whatever you wish to do. You can also add ranges. You could add more or less octaves. Octaves is the amount of notes you have in there. Currently it has two, and I'm gonna leave it at that for right now just for the exploration piece. So once we leave the settings, we can check all kinds of things. You can also do recordings like you do with a microphone, and you can also change the instruments. But let's take a listen first. We have this. So 
that is the marimba sound. We can also change that marimba sound to a piano sound. We can change it to a set of strings. We can change it to a woodwind. Or we can change it to a synth. I happen to like the strings, so I'm going to use the string sound. And then, one of the nice things about this is we're not stuck using only the dots on one square. We can actually add the dot, uh, multiple dots. So if we wanted to make chords, it'll sound like this. thing is we don't have to put sound in every single square. Let's take some of those out. I don't like that note there, so I'm going to move it there. Now before we really get going, we can also add in a beat underneath. So you can make a lot of stuff with SongMaker. I'm going to see what I can do with it. Oh, by the way, the electronic also can be blocks or a kit or a kunga. So pick whichever one sounds best to you. I'm going to not put everything in this so you can explore a little bit. SongMaker is so easy to use that after about two minutes of playing around, I was able to come up with this. Now, if you really like your creation, one of the things that you can do on SongMaker you can't do pretty much on anything else is save it. When you click the save button, it'll actually give you a link that you can copy and then share with your friends. It's pretty cool and you can post it in a comment section on a video you happen to like. Like this one? No, you couldn't do that. Well, that's up to you. So if you come up with something pretty cool, post it in the comments below. Let people see your amazing work. I hope you've had fun making music. Again, here's my song one last time. Before we sign off, I want to give you my final word of the day, and that is box, as in a thing you put stuff into, a box. So that's our third word. So that's it. Making music with Chrome Music Labs. I hope you've had a really good time doing so. It's been a lot of fun sharing it with you on our Make Music Friday. They will come out every time I put out a video on Friday. So look forward to those in the future. Until then though, see you bye. Did you guys have fun with Chrome Music Labs?